simp, not a simp. A simp, not a simp. A simp, not a simp. Me eat so many shrimp. I got I die for My bitch a choose it. Love her, never fuck without a rubber. Never in the sheets like it on top of the cover. Money on the dresser. Drive a compressor. Top notch hoes. Get the most, not the lesser. Trash like the buck of $40 in the club. Fucking up the game. Bitch, it gets no love. She be cross country giving all that she got. A thousand a pop. I'm pulling business off the line. I smashed up the gray one. Bought me a red. Every time we hit the parking lot, we turn head. Some hoes want to choose, but them bitches too scary. Your bitch chose me. You ain't a bitch. You a fairy. Everybody, it is Artie of Artie's Corporate Fiction. Uh, happy Tuesday to all of you. We have a bit of a bit of a chill, a chill stream tonight. Um, we are going to uh, play a little Eld Elden Ring, but also take a look at this video uh, that I watched. I think uh, sometime a little bit last year. Um, I think when I watched it, it was uh, I think when I was uh, attending my brother's wedding last October. And it was gr it was a great, well put together like YouTuber doc on an individual called Jacob Wall. If you don't know who Jacob Wall is, he was an infamous Trump supporter on social media, um, but was m made even more infamous by the kinds of antics that he would engage in as a member of Trump's, you know, ant uh, Trump's uh, inner circle, what what have you. So what? We're three, Doug. We're three minutes in. And apparently, uh, everything's offline right now. What the hell? Uh, yeah, uwu to you, Doug. Thank you for the freaking super chat and the jump scare. It's appreciated. Apparently, Steam is down. Um, so that's a thing. That's apparently happened. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and let the uh, let the show. Uh, ah, oh my God, I can't even speak now. You just thrown me off. PlayStation Network is down entirely as well. Is there like a is there like a freaking global hack going on? Is this Russia? Is Russia is is this Russia's going? I think it's Russia. We're gonna we're gonna say it's Russia. Anyhow, well I can still play anyway. Whatever. Um, I'll just play offline, I'm like a scrub. Uh, so what was I gonna say? Jacob Wall was a Trump. Uh, so that's what the documentary is kind of showcasing this guy, who this guy is, how. He came to be, and I thought it was very interesting. I know that he's a Trump supporter, so there's going to be a bit of politics involved, but I promise that it's really focused on Jacob and his personality and not s simply the fact that he was a Trump supporter. The way I see it, it doesn't matter whether or not Jacob Wall did what he did, whether it's in support of Bernie Sanders or Trump, it's still kind of nuts. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and hit play. Oh, okay. Oh, by the way, 
by the way, this documentary is from a channel, Oki. I have a link to the description uh, to the video itself. It's actually a two-parter, so we're gonna see part one. But it's a very, very, very well done uh, look at who this guy was. Chances are that you have no idea who Jacob Wall and Jack Berkman are. Well, in that case, sit tight while I fill you in on the details of the shenanigans. And believe me, there's a lot to get through with these two, and most of it's nuts. Today, we're pre presenting some very serious allegations against Senator Elizabeth Warren. She was involved in a very explicit relationship with a male escort who stands to my left side, a decorated U.S. combat veteran, somebody who served our country, a war hero, truly. I don't think this is a funny thing. <laughs> you're probably wondering what's happening here. What you're watching is footage from a press conference in which Jacob Wall and Jack Berkman promised to expose Senator Elizabeth Warren for an extramarital affair involving this guy, Kelvin Willie, who claimed to be a male escort. Senator Elizabeth Warren first secured my services from a website called Cowboys for Angels. The site is Pretty, can you shrink your for attractive young men. We can't so really see the time. Senator Warren wanted not just rough sex, but extensive BDSM play. I'm sure you're quite familiar with, I'm sure. She, she was very sexually adventurous. And Senator Warren engaged in lesbian sex with my friend from high school. Well, hold on, hold on, hang on. What we're going to show you now, what we're going to show you now is that the sex between our client here and Senator Warren was so violent that he actually obtained scars on his back. You can see two scars here. That was from the Cat of Nine Tales. This press conference was in 2019. That was from Senator Warren's transgressions. Between late 2018 and 2020, Jacob Wall and Jack Berkman held several press conferences to smear major United States politicians with completely fabricated stories. The circus-like spectacle of their attempted Elizabeth Warren smear has all of the common hallmarks of one of their press conferences. Most of them are held in front of Jack Berkman's house. A TV out front displays a graphic pertaining to the event. This one says, Elizabeth Warren, Cougar? Their security guard, Louise, stands there looking confused. Get that guy out of there. He's freaking me out. Get that guy out of there. <laughs> they bring out no. an accuser who could barely read the script handed to them without laughing or messing up the details. Using a lime green strap on dildo. <laughs> I can remember. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm What's sorry. Funny? I'm... What's funny? And a crowd of hecklers form just to mock the living shit out of the whole thing. So. Yeah, I mean, people just saw right through it. I mean, there were continuous yeah. lies. Other common fixtures of these events are a guy playing a banjo. Hey, you're gonna have to stop with the banjo, or you're gonna be you're gonna be kicked out. <laughs> yeah. No, listen. <laughs> banjo. A banjo heckler. It's great. I love it. <laughs> No, you're gonna have to stop. You're gonna have to stop with the banjo. A spread of donuts. A guy in a corn cob costume. <laughs> and Will Summer, a reporter for the Daily Beast, who was kind enough to talk to me for this video. You seem like you're the like you're the world's for, foremost Jacob Wall expert. Right? I think, unfortunately, I think that's fair to say. <laughs> so why is this interesting? Clearly, these guys are just attention-seeking trolls or a sideshow act, right? Well, I think it's far more sinister than that. Currently, they're facing legal battles in three different states for their antics. Jacob Wall, who only recently turned 23, has also been hit. That's how young this dude is. He's still, like, in his mid-20s with unrelated felony charges for fraud. Their actions have only served to irreparably tarnish their reputations. Reputations that were already sullied to begin with. Yeah, if kinda. their intentions have been motivated by their political beliefs, then their smears have only been a detriment to their cause. And if they're simply trolls, well, then the joke's on them since they're both facing the possibility of serious time in federal prison for their latest stunt. 
What remains unclear to me is why do they do what they do? What do they gain? What motivates them to constantly shoot themselves in the foot? That's the point of this video. It's to take a deep look into the lives of two men whose actions just confound me. Damn it. Hi, I'm Jacob Wood. I'm running for ASB Treasurer. If you want more dances, more spirit days, more lunchtime competitions, and a better treasurer, then you need to vote for me. The way I'll promise more money is to do better fundraisers and better dances that will bring in more money for the school, and more money for more fun for you. These people sure want Jacob to be treasurer. Jacob Wall was born on December 12, 1997, in Los Angeles, California. Get off my lawn. His father, David Wall, is a criminal defense attorney and media personality. His mother, a social worker. A child of divorce who grew up in Corona, California, Jacob spent his youth shooting guns, playing basketball, and accompanying his father to television news studios. What we have here is a PDX 112 gauge round. It's got 172 caliber slug and three double off buckshot pellets in here. And we're going to test it out on this piece of paper. Wow. In 2003, his father, David Wall, joined CBS2 Palm Springs as a legal analyst covering the trial of convicted murderer Scott Peterson. Following that, he appeared on Fox News as an occasional commentator. Although David Wall pursued a career as an on-air reporter, his ambitions never quite panned out. These days, he focuses on his career as a lawyer, sharing his conservative hey, political ready? beliefs on Twitter, and posing shirtless in boudoir calendars. Win, lose. A lot of my childhood came down to winning or losing, and I love winning. Today on Daily Vice, Jacob Wool is an 18-year-old hedge fund manager who's already made a name for himself in the business. The origin story of how Jacob Wall became interested in the stock market is fuzzy, mostly due to his inclination for embellishment. If you take Jacob's word to heart, then he was a financial prodigy who shorted five shares of SPY when he was only eight. My first trade was uh, shorting five shares of uh, SPY when I was eight and... Uh, hold on, hold on, let's back up for a second. Shorting five shares of SPY, but who taught yeah. you this stuff? To explain more, here's Mark Melan, a leading expert in non-correlated investing and jur- When he was seven. Man, I barely even know what shorting is as, a, as an adult. Journalist who covered Jacob Wall's early days. He claimed that when he was eight years old, he shorted five shares of SBY. And can you explain what that is and why you're laughing? Okay, because um, I've had kids, eight, an eight year old kid, I guess it's possible. Um, I consider it highly unlikely. If you look at Wool's life, you can break it down into patterns of deception. Um, he had his hedge fund period, uh, but then there was a discernible, repeatable pattern uh, that after he got out of his hedge fund period, he later spiraled into something completely different in the political world, but it followed a lot of the same patterns. Make outlandish statements that are provably false or uh, have a high uh, propensity to potentially be false. Um, and then get into uh, a degrees of legal and or regulatory trouble, uh, and then it all blows up on When Jacob was a 17-year-old junior Sounds in high strategy. school, he parlayed his interest in the stock market to become a commodities trading advisor for average Joes like his gym teacher. The operation was most definitely small time, but it made for a nice little human interest story for local cable news stations like KTLA, which featured him in a segment called Orange County High School hedge fund manager earns the nickname Wall of Wall Street. Ah. Wall of Wall Street being an obvious play on the movie Wolf of Wall Street and definitely a moniker that Jacob assigned to himself. So I want to get on Monster Energy as an underlying. I'm very competitive Monster. and I'm good with numbers, so it's almost a natural fit. He started Wall Capital Investment Group about four months ago with his classmates as his first investors. And then it just grew from there to their parents and then their grandparents, uncles, aunts, uh, you name it and uh, in general, just people from the community, like teachers, coaches. Nice job, guys, nice job. One of those coaches is Jacob's PE teacher. Yeah, a little skeptical at first. You know, you're thinking, you know, I mean, it's my first year teaching high school. I was eight years in junior high, so I know the kids are obviously smarter in high school, and I thought, man, well, this might be a genius kid. 
Utilizing a value stock picking approach inspired by Warren Buffett, Jacob launched Wall Capital Investment Group, which solicited middle-class clients and promised them the world. And no, I'm not being tongue-in-cheek here. That's what it said in his promotional materials, that he promised them the world. Dude was running a dinky little hedge fund out of his mom's basement, and he acted like he was Gordon Gecko. He even dressed like him, too. Yeah, pretty was much. Was there somebody just, that influenced yeah. you, or was there um, Gordon Gecko, if any, if anybody? Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you liked him or you hated him? No, I liked Gordon Gecko. Okay. I always thought he was a cool guy. Okay. <laughs> Green, oh no! Oh god. For lack of a better word, is good. Um, you can categorize hedge funds in a couple different ways. One way Fantastic is to look model. at who their investors are. Um, his investors were middle class mom and pop. That's a huge red flag. A hedge fund generally speaking, is used by institutional investors, um, very sophisticated investors, and uh, high net worth individuals. The fact that he was soliciting, at that point, his gym investor, he was soliciting a stock investment. So that stock investment would fall under SEC regulations. Um, but when he was also uh, soliciting derivatives investments, he was soliciting mom and pop, people who don't really know uh, the ins and outs, particularly of derivatives, which can be sophisticated uh, investment tools. Still in high school, Jacob, who was by no means a big player other than perhaps in his own mind, decided that he was ready for the big leagues. Even though Wall Capital was nothing more than a cute little project funded by adults eager to support a young man's passions, Jacob boasted in promotional material that his firm used a guerrilla warfare mentality towards investing uh -huh. that was able to outperform the institutional giants again and again. Around this time, Jacob appeared on Fox News to promote Wall Capital Investment, which he had taken to calling the most revolutionary hedge fund in the world. In 1975, IBM ran the personal computer game. And if you wanted to have a personal computer, you had to be super rich until a young kid named Steve Jobs came around and changed the whole thing. That's Everybody what I'm here to do. Everybody loves uh, Wait a minute, you? Everybody, all scammers love to latch on to Steve Jobs. I've seen it way too many, way too often that scammers idolize Steve Jobs for some reason. Who are going to change the whole investing world like Jobs changed the computing world? That's what I'm gonna to try to do, Stuart. And this actually worked to attract a handful of investors impressed by the 17-year-old's on-air appearance. And this is where the story takes a darker turn, because Jacob Ball decided to scam the ever-living shit out of them. So Jacob kind of breaks onto the scene, you know, outside of his high school or whatever. The, the, his first sort of brush with infamy is when he claims to be kind of this teen hedge fund genius. And he has a couple of these quote-unquote hedge funds. Um, I, I believe he goes on Fox News, he gets on TV a couple times as kind of this like wonderkin. Um, but in reality, uh, you know, it's, it's basically a fiction. It doesn't really exist. And so he's, he's pitching these investors and he's getting tens of thousands of dollars, uh, but, but he's not really making the returns he claims he's making. In March 2015, a man named David Diedrich contacted Jacob after seeing him on TV. When they spoke on the phone, Jacob grossly mischaracterized the size and scope of Wall Capital Investment Group. He told Diedrich that it managed 178 accounts and between nine to $10 million in assets. Even though the reality was that Wall Capital had no more than 13 investors and managed no more than $500,000 in assets at any time. He also claimed that Wall Capital Investments trades had a 99.5% profitability of profit. Jacob described these numbers to Diedrich as textbook trading for Wall Capital. Diedrich sent him a $75,000 investment in three different payments between March and October 2015. Months later, Jacob told Diedrich that his investment had grown to 89. Why? Why would you ever give $75,000 or $89,000 of your money to a fucking teenager? thousand dollars but when Dietrich wanted to collect Jacob only paid him forty four thousand dollars after stalling for several days less than half of his initial investment and purported gains Jacob told Dietrich that the difference was due to losses but an investigation by the National Futures Association indicated that his trading account told a different story he was actually making money not losing it 
The National Futures Association oh is a self-regulatory organization for the U.S. derivatives industry. Jacob became a member of the NFA in February 2016. As a member of the NFA, Jacob was required to comply with their rules in order to continue to operate his commodities advisory firm. So when David Diedrich sent a complaint to the NFA saying that Jacob defrauded him, they launched an investigation. I think one, another one of the interesting subtracts of this whole story is that he, he ran into a regulator who takes their job as a sheriff uh, to protect investors seriously. And that's when he ran into the NFA, the National Futures Association, uh, which is a, an independent self-regulatory body uh, that polices uh, the derivatives industry to root out guys exactly like uh, Jacob Wool. There's this derivatives industry that's very tough regulator. And so what does Wool do? Wool goes into that industry. How preposterous is that? The National Futures Association learned of two trading accounts controlled by Jacob Wall, one in the name of NEX Capital and the other in the name of Michelle Wall, Jacob's mother. The NFA complaint reads, these accounts had a total of approximately $260,000 in deposits, trading gains of approximately $36,000 and about $296,000 in withdrawal. Is the audio uh, bad or what? Sorry. It sounds good sounds to me good. on my end. Sounds yeah? good. Okay. Calls. On June 20th, 2016, a team of NFA investigators made an unannounced visit to what they thought was NEX Capital's headquarters. What they found when they visited what Jacob listed as the main office of NEX Capital wasn't what they expected. Instead of an office, they found a residential. Hmm. Really? Um, am I staticky? Okay, I'm yes, fine. It's coming out staticky to us. Oh. Okay, so my audio is fine. It's the video's audio that's staticky, according to chat. Yes. All right. Okay, Mantha, can you step out? Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, let me... Hang on. Give me a second here. You're saying I sound staticky, too. Weird. residential home, Jacob's father's house. When they rang the buzzer, no one answered. Their emails and phone calls also went unanswered. And they have this great report where it's like, you know, we went to the first address he said he had listed for his business. And, you know, we see a guy peeking out the window and then he won't answer the door. And then they go to another house and there's a little kid who answers the door. It's supposed to be an office and it's just a little kid and it's presumably like Jacob's brother or something. That same day, they visited an address Jacob listed as the location of the firm's books and records. What they found there was another dead end. The address took them to an office at La Sierra University, which was closed at the time. So here's where things get even funnier. David Wall, Jacob's dad, called the NFA team furious with them for what he called stalking his son and threatened to file a report against them with the LAPD. Additionally, he argued that the NFA had no authority over his son or any ex capital as Jacob had withdrawn his membership earlier that month. This is partially true. Jacob did request withdrawal of his membership from the NFA on June 13, 2016. But the NFA rules state that a request to withdraw membership becomes effective 30 days after the withdrawal request is made. It was the 23rd of June and Wall made his request to withdraw membership on June 13th. So Jacob was still a member and had to comply with their investigation, which is exactly what they informed David and Jacob by email. Here's the bottom line. There are some exceptions, but by and large, if you sell a commodity investment offer to the public, you have to register. Now, if you're just trading commodities, you don't need to register. But if you're selling it, you have to register. 
Instead of listening, David Wall repeated that he had contacted the LAPD and any attempts to contact Jacob would result in their arrest and prosecution. Their hands tied and Jacob refusing to comply with their investigation, the NFA decided to permanently bar Jacob Wall and any ex-capital from NFA membership, which effectively meant that he was permanently banned from running a hedge fund that managed futures derivatives trading. This wasn't the only time David Wall threatened legal action against someone he perceived as harassing his son. He did the same thing to William Legate, a software developer best known for creating the iOS application Fake a Text when he well, was 14. The, the sound is bad. David it should Wall be sounding bad for every part, not to just remove tweets about Jacob. The video David in Wall my audio sounding fine. That's the problem. About a photoshopped image of Jacob Wall wearing a corn cob costume. Corn cobbing refers to people who refuse to accept that they have lost a debate and continue to insist otherwise. Hey Billy, this is David Rowe, Jacob's dad. Hey, we noticed you're back at it on Twitter again, uh, sending out defamatory, actionable tweets, uh, complete lies about Jacob. I'm not, I'm honestly at my wit's end with you. Well, the thing is, guys, the, the audio video sounds perfectly fine on my end. I don't know why it's coming out bad on y'all's end. The audio is peaking? We are going to file suit. We are going to serve you with We're done messing around with you. So you can delete those tweets immediately or you'll be served with suit uh, very quickly. So it's your choice, Bill, Willie, William, whatever your name is, but we're getting serious now. There was one profile that had me in what looked like I was wearing a corn costume, like a corn stock, a, a, a piece of corn. One of Jacob's tactics to solicit investors was to hire models off of Craigslist to reel them in. Jacob would bring these women along to... Now, now the audio is even worse. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> the chopped and screwed version. Um. Okay. To investment conferences. To get them to flirt with investors. And when an investor took the bait, then Jacob would swoop in and make a pitch. Wow. Jacob posted a number of websites such as wallgirls.com and melanierios.management.com, which is the name of a porn star. The main records show that he also registered buyabadbitch.com and buyaslut.com. It's it's even worse now. Oh my god. I don't know why. All right. I guess I think it, it may be a uh, Discord, so I'll just have to He told the Daily Beast, quote, fake websites and Craigslist ads were posted by trolls of mine in 2016, and I immediately reported them to the FBI. Wallgirls.com featured a section called Wall Girl of the Month. Sometime in the summer of 2016, Jacob uploaded a photograph of a young woman without her consent and described her Still as- bad. I d I, I, I closed out um, Discord. Let me see if it this is No, I, I closed out Discord entirely.
Ha <laughs> ha, nice one, Aaron. Mm. One of the newest additions to the agency. That young woman's mother told the Daily Beast that Jacob reached out to her daughter, representing himself as a social media manager of Instagram models, and promised to make her famous. Jacob then used her photos on wallgirls.com and made her a wall girl of the month. He eventually took her photos down after her mother called him and told him to do so. Okay, so at this point he's banned from the NFA for life, and now Arizona's got him, uh, fraud and misrepresentation. <laughs> I don't know. Um... I don't know. I'll try another video. I don't think it's going to matter, though. I got you now, chicken. Fucking you, bastard. Staticky as well. Yeah. All of a sudden, VLC media players deciding to be a piece of shit. Um. Right? Well, I... I don't know. It's not like I touched anything to affect the audio. I don't know why it's all of a sudden deciding to not to not to play nice anymore. Especially when it's your guys are saying that my that my mic sounds fine and the game apparently sounds fine. But not the VLC and not uh, not even playing this on YouTube seems to work, right? I assume that's the case. It's so bad. Great. Fucking hell. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Um, oh, 
Poly Mixer. I don't understand why it would have this here. Okay. I I don't know. I think I fucked up. I don't know. I um uh, <laughs> I mean, I could turn it into a gaming stream, but that's not what you guys are here for. I don't I think all 250 of y'all aren't here to watch me play video games and I'm not going to bait and switch y'all into that. Um and there was much rejoicing. But I appreciate that. P rhymes for the five dollars. Uh Colony L3. Uh I'll just do some super chats rejoicing. right now. Colony L3, uh, thank you for the 199. I did get the uh the package. I actually picked it up today uh from my PO box. Dr. Man, $2. Have you hit NG plus yet already on my main character? Yes, I have. I was playing my spell build uh, earlier. Uh, $5. P rhymes. Are you sure you didn't touch anything? This sounds like a TikTok meme rap song. Bass boosted like nuts. Great. And then Colin L3199 does a gaming stream now. No. Uh, the suit, even the super chats are bad. I'm so I Why? I don't understand why. I, I don't know. Why is everything fucking up except for my mic? Usually the mic is the problem. Guys, I think I might have to just call it a, a night. I don't want to deal with this because this is frustrating as hell. Um... And there was much rejoicing. Restarting it on stream is just going to cause problem. I don't understand. Okay, I see. I see how the audio gets uh, on the desktop audio gets really nasty. Thank you, P Rhymes, for the snark, and Aaron for the five dollars. Uh, do a full reset and try again. <sighs> All right, I'll um. And there was much rejoicing. Guys, I'm looking at the equalizer on OBS. Everything looks fine. I haven't touched anything since the last time I was streaming when it was fine. I don't understand why. It's got to be something with OBS because, again, guys, the audio, all the audio sounds fine to me. There's something going on with OBS, it seems. All right, I, I'll just fucking. I'll just restart it.
I'll restart it, and if it uh, continues on, we'll, I'll just have to um, stop it for the night and figure it out. Okay, thank you, Miss Lonnie. I'll give it a shot. Uh, I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. Bye-bye.